Doctors of Reddit, what is the weirdest thing that you've seen while you were at work? Not a doctor, but a paramedic. We were in a crazy, busy metro system and we got called out for eye pain. Nine times out of ten, calls like these don't really require an emergency room. It'll be like an eyelash and an eye or something. I stride into the house and casually introduce myself and ask what the problem seems to be. The lady turns to me, showing her right eye bulging out three times further than it should, and says, My eye popped out of my head. Yeah, that's a new one for me. No trauma, no nothing, just walking around and suddenly, eye just out of her skull. Holy crow, lady, let's get you to the ER. Turns out she had a super dangerous clot called a cavernous sinus thrombosis. Basically, it clogged one of the drainage vessels for the brain and built up back pressure until her eye popped out. The doc said that most patients with her condition were in no state to have a conversation, so it was a marvel that she was up and walking and talking and complaining about her eye. I'm holding my eyeballs while I read this comment. Not a doc, but related to an ambulance doctor. They received a call from a nearby village. They rush there, and they're told that the injured man is in the garage. And when they go down there, they find a completely disoriented guy with a fishing harpoon in his head. It entered through his lower jaw and the tip was going through the top of his skull. He was disoriented and hitting the pillars in the walls of the garage. They take him to the nearest hospital and the best Spanish cranial surgeon goes there from the capital in a heli. Several hours later, the surgery ends and the guy's conscious with little to no damage. I saw the x-ray and the harpoon went through the middle of the brain. This guy is alive and he's perfectly well. Not a doctor, but one time I went to the ER a couple of years ago for stomach pain. And the nurses kept leaving my door open, and across the way there was an old man who was delirious and had dementia or Alzheimer's. And he kept getting up and bending over and pointing his family jewels right at me over and over again. And when the nurses would close his door, he would open the door so that he could keep doing it. I'm 30. Obligatory, not a doctor, but a paramedic. Was taking an old lady home from the hospital in the middle of the night. Super sweet. And seemed well put together. After getting off the freeway, we had to go through about eight miles of underbrush on a dirt road that Google Maps didn't even recognize. When we finally got close, we realized that we were in a swamp due to the seven-foot-tall reeds surrounding the ambulance. We finally found a driveway and unloaded her. Her place was this huge plantation-style house practically spilling out books, completely isolated from society. Literally, just mounds of books, as well as antique statues, vases, paintings, taxidermied animals, and even an old musket. We had to clear a path in her living room to let her off the stretcher. Apparently one of her dogs slipped past us while we were making our way in, so we had to spend 20 minutes trying to get that thing back inside. As we were leaving and putting the stretcher back together, we see a pair of glowing yellow eyes blinking at us from behind the ambulance. So we throw the stretcher in, we book it, and we don't talk about it again. The entire experience still feels like a fever dream, and I'm pretty sure we almost got murdered by a mountain lion. I'm a nurse, not a doctor, but I looked after a young woman who had a swallowed a hair comb whilst in prison, presumably to get away from the general population and or because of mental illness. The comb had gotten lodged in her esophagus and had to be surgically removed. The weirdest part was reading the imaging report that described all the other things that she had managed to swallow before the comb, including a toothbrush, a tube of toothpaste, textus, you name it. My friend is learning medicine, and she told me that sometimes she gets poor people coming in for free treatment in her university hospital. She told me that the weirdest thing she saw was a guy coming in with a presumed itch in his foot, and when they took off his shoe, it was just covered in maggots and rotting away. An elderly lady without family that had been living alone in her house without anyone to take care of her, who hadn't been able to take off her slippers for presumably months, so yes, her toenails had kept growing inside of them, and with nowhere to go, they had curved around and under her feet like ice skate blades. If you unwound them, they probably would have been about 20 centimeters long. If you know an elderly person living alone somewhere and you notice that they're not getting any visitors, please check up on them every once in a while. You might prevent worse things than just some dirty, ugly toenails. I once worked with a scruffy, dirty, nasty lad who was always covered in oil from steel and just general nastiness. I once watched him pop out an earplug, the rubber cone style things that was black from dirt, look at it for a couple of seconds, and then just started to suck all the dirty ear gunk and oil from it and popped it back into his ear. There was only me that saw this happen and I just about vomited all over the workplace. One time we had a man come into the ER screaming that his mother was dying in the car. So me and a couple of nurses go out to the car and see what's going on. As a mom continued to panic, he opens the car door and we find a dead raccoon. We realized that this was a behavioral health problem and that we'd run into in this situation. He'd scooped up the raccoon and performed a mock trauma a call on this guy's mother in the ER, all while the other nurses tried to convince the guy to step into an ER room to get evaluated. Some dude got shot in his left shoulder three times and right leg two times, I think. This guy walked into the hospital, like, on a normal Monday morning going to the coffee shop. After his treatment, he also asked if he could go now. 
Until now, I don't understand how that guy did that. Maybe he's got one of those rare disorders that causes your brain to not process pain? I don't know. We're in a weird world. Uh, happy he's okay, though, you know? Damn. It's not my story, but I had to share it. My sister is in nursing school, and while you're learning, the school will put you in different positions. For example, labor and delivery, the morgue, or the psych ward. She was excited to be in the psych ward until a woman ran down the hallway screaming, They're after me! Stop them! They can't have me! As she on the floor and threw it at imaginary people. Sadly, my sister wasn't imaginary, and she got sprayed with dookie within the first hour of clonking in. She says that she'll never work there again. I'm inside a vet hospital, and we have a dog that had a tumor removed from his side. He's an Irish wolfhound, and there's not enough skin to cover the site, so it's a gaping hole. Like, this dog is 200 pounds, and it has a giant hole around the size of a melon on its side, and you can see all of his organs and what not inside of it. He comes in for a daily bandage cleaning and is overall a healthy pup showing no sign of pain. His wound is clearing as well and they expect a good recovery. I feel like this might be a good place to ask this even though it's a bit off topic. See, when I was a kid, I was in a long-term treatment facility. One of the kids there, he would actually uh, use towels to clean himself after going to the bathroom. He tried to flush them too. I've read similar things on r slash tales from the front desk. Is that a common thing? Anesthesiologist here. Part of me thinks that I went into medicine because I'm inherently nosy. Anyways, in my last year of residency, we had this young patient and her husband. She thought she was pregnant as her periods had stopped and her belly was getting bigger. I don't know why she didn't go see an OB, but uh, anyways, she was at home at a point where she thought she was like eight or nine months pregnant and she felt something pop and a sharp pain and, you know, thought she was going into labor. Then her legs went numb as she could no longer walk. She and her husband didn't think that was normal, so they checked her into our ED. Turns out she had a huge yolk sac tumor with Mets to the spine, liver, and other places, and had to go for an emergency spinal decompression, given her neurological symptoms. I wasn't the anesthesia resident for that case, but I was the one for her second surgery when they wanted to remove that primary tumor and resect some of the liver mets. The primary tumor was the size of a basketball. I felt so bad for that young couple, but I still wonder to this day why they didn't get some sort of like ultrasound or see an OB. Eight or nine months pregnant and you're just like, a anyways. During my internship, a person casually shared that he had been drinking sanitizer for the past three months. Yeah, chronic alcoholics are famous for this. Recovering alcoholic here, been there, along with mouthwash, wife's perfume, and various others. My wife worked in the emergency department. The guy came in with life-threateningly severe sepsis due to injecting his arms and legs with plant fertilizer in an effort to, and I do not joke, although I wish I were, grow his muscles. You cannot make that shit up. Did he use miracle Grow? Plant fertilizer with potassium and phosphorus both kill human slash animals, plants, or any living thing for that matter, when injected at high concentration into a particular tissue area. So yeah, I, anyways, I'm, guess, I'm guessing that that guy wasn't careful enough to dilute this or inject it into a big vein to reduce the risk. Well, when you're injecting plant fertilizer, I, I don't think that your brain's in the right place in the first place. Anyways, not a doctor, but used to work in the OR. Had a guy come in with stomach slash bowel issues. He was pretty young, so it was concerning. And I opened him up and I found a toothpick sideways in his bowel, causing a blockage. He had no idea that he ate something with a toothpick. I know a guy that passed from complications of eating a small toothpick in a club sandwich. Serious. Hot dogs? When you order them to go, sometimes they wrap your hot dog and stick a toothpick through to keep that wrapper in place. One time I swallowed half a toothpick because the idiot at the restaurant broke a toothpick in the hot dog and just put another one on and didn't tell me. I only noticed it as I was swallowing. Yeah, it hurt like hell. Scraped my throat the whole way down. Former x-ray tech here. PT came in on the Ambo who had swallowed a spatula. Yeah, no, a spatula, like the plastic kind that you flip pancakes with. The story was she was cooking and tried to pry something loose that was stuck to the pan. The spatula broke and then she screamed, somehow leading to the broken part flipping backwards towards her and down her throat, which is what she told us <laughs> anyways. How in the hell? Is what I would say. I worked in an emergency room at a hospital in a city on the west coast known for a high rate of drug users and homelessness. A true wretched hive of scum and villainy. So some years back, a little old African-American man checked himself in as a 5150 for a 72-hour hold slash psychiatric evaluation. Awaiting transportation to a psychiatric facility the homeless people like to frequent due to the free food, showers, and bedding. A tweaker's wet dream. The old man was screaming in a slight southern accent that he needed needs a doctor, his brain's about to explode, and he can't function, etc., all while laying his head on the table and staring at the wall. 
I finally got tired of this yelling and I asked him what's wrong. He repeated the same stuff that his brain stopped working. He can't think. He needs help. His brain doesn't function. He needs to see the doctor, etc. He then started talking about how his head hurt. I finally decided to tell him, uh, yeah, man, that's why the crack is bad for you. He immediately got up in a quick reaction and looked me directly in the eyes and snapped back in a very soft voice, different from his yelling, saying, no, no, the crack is good for me. He then started giving all these stupid, made-up scientific reasons as to why crack cocaine is good for him. Uh, going as far as explaining that while a lot of people have a negative idea about the drugs, it actually has positive side effects. Just a minute ago, he had been talking about how his brain isn't functioning, and now he was given a full-blown explanation on uh, his drug use and how they cancel out his demons. At the time, I had never in my life laughed so hard at the ridiculous shit a patient told me. I decided to give him extra sandwiches and juice just because of how funny he was. Lesson learned that day. Not all drug addicts are bad people. They just need help. I still tell that story. I was a medic in the army. There was a guy who had hiccups for four weeks. And no, he wasn't trying to get out. I'd be more surprised if he was trying to get out and that was the best he could come up with. Kill me. Kill me. God. <laughs> Medical student here. Uh, just two weeks ago, I met a patient with Gorham's disease, a.k.a. vanishing bone disease. This is a very rare disease where your bone just disappears. It was triggered when he suffered a fracture in his leg and discovered when they x-rayed his leg that he'd collapsed months after having the fracture internally fixed. His upper right femur had just disappeared. Wait, what? So is that like waking up and finding out that you don't have a skull or something? Well, good morning, world. Oh my god, my head is flat. <laughs>